Sweden is famous for its solutions to save its own resources and reduce its carbon footprint. Clearly, this is about one of the most vital systems in the country, the heating system. It involves both really surprising solutions, such as capturing human body heat to heat buildings, and more common methods like using the sun to increase temperature in stations that produce both heat and electricity. The Swedes also have caves under the city of Vosteros, located 62 miles west of Stockholm, but these aren't just ordinary caves. They're filled with water heated to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, they're part of the heating system as well. What's more, many even call these underground spaces an innovative solution. Why? Let's take a closer look at how it works. It's actually pretty strange that a cave filled with almost boiling water was needed to heat a city in Sweden. The country had already managed to build an effective centralized heating system without this seemingly odd solution. Imagine having a stove or boiler in each separate house. That's how heating used to work a long time ago. In other words, it was every house for itself. With a centralized system, there are no bulky objects in the houses that generate heat. All of this is handled by one or several large stations located in separate buildings. From there, the heated water is distributed through an extensive system of pipes to residential houses and other buildings. Thus, in Sweden, more than half of all buildings in the country are heated this way, regardless of their purpose. It's a pretty good figure. For example, across the entire EU, the average number of buildings heated this way doesn't exceed 6%. But how can you look at the situation in the country without knowing how things are going with heating in the capital? You just can't. So let's say that Stockholm has around 1,864 miles of pipes carrying hot water, and the coverage of the centralized heating system reaches 90%. In reality, it's not about the impressive scale of Sweden's centralized heating, but about how innovative it is. Very often, fossil fuels like coal are used to heat water in such systems. It's burned, the water heats up, simple and clear. But in Sweden, they've set a goal of reaching zero emissions. And to achieve this, the task was to find a complete decarbonization of the heating and hot water supply system by 2030. Just so you get the picture, right now fossil fuels make up only 5% of the energy used for heating in Sweden, and the other 95% is green energy. First thing, of course, Swedes looked at the sky, saw the sun, and decided they need to harness its heat for heating homes. That's how entire fields of solar panels started popping up. In 2021, for example, the largest solar heating system with solar concentrators in Sweden called Hogslotten was put into operation. The system covers an area of 2.5 acres with an aperture area of 32,000 square feet and a total thermal capacity of 1.5 megawatts. Here's how it works. Sunlight reflects off a special surface onto a pipe through which a heat carrier flows, in this case water. It heats up to the right temperature and then goes into the heating system. This is how, without any coal, using only the sun, the Swedes improve the conditions in their homes. To understand how much this solution reduces dependence on fossil fuels, you can say just a few words. 10 square feet of collectors can produce the same amount of energy as 26 gallons of oil. Another way to generate heat for district heating without using fossil fuels is used by Jernhusen at Stockholm Central Station. To say it's unusual is an understatement because the heat comes simply from people. The company thought over 200,000 people pass through the station every day, and it just so happens that each one of them generates a little heat while standing still and more while doing something. Running, drinking water, eating, and everything else people do at the station, all of it generates extra heat. Why not collect it? To do this, the company created heat exchangers in the ventilation system of the central station where the excess heat from people's bodies heats up the water. After that, the liquid is pumped into the heating system of the neighboring building, so walking through Stockholm Station, you could actually consider yourself a heater. There's another way to heat buildings, data centers. It's no secret that they also give off heat, just like people do. If you have a computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, you've probably heard the fan noise coming from it. That's the cooling system keeping the device from overheating. Data centers have all that too. It's not necessarily fans, but the main point is that everything gets cooled, which means heat is released, a lot of heat. The company Vern states that in its data center located in neighboring Finland, specifically in the city of Helsinki, for every 1 megawatt of IT power provided by servers, 1.3 megawatts of heat is generated. Now let's get back to Stockholm. It's literally the data hub of Northern Europe. 
Add to that the ever-growing use of artificial intelligence, which seriously ramps up the power needed for data centers, and you get a lot of excess heat. It can just keep releasing and dissipate without any benefit, but thanks to the cooperation between IT companies and utility providers in Stockholm, most data centers are equipped with systems that allow them to send excess heat into the centralized heating network. Another equally fascinating way Sweden gets heat for their heating systems is through cogeneration plants. They fit perfectly with the Swedes' desire to keep warm at a lower cost as these plants make both heat and electricity. Let's say you load coal into a system. It burns, which makes a turbine spin, and that generates electricity. Everyone's happy because the lights are on at home. But obviously, when coal burns, it produces heat. So why not capture that heat and use it for heating too? So people can not only enjoy the lights, but also stop shivering in the cold. Cogeneration systems are precisely what can make this happen. The Swedes, as usual, are working toward better ecology. In most Swedish setups, they burn not fossil fuels, but natural waste or biomass like wood chips, bark, sawdust, pellets, and all other leftovers from wood processing. However, these plants still emit pollutants, which naturally concern the Swedes who aim to completely eliminate any negative environmental impact. That's why they now plan to equip plants with systems that capture carbon dioxide. However, these systems have other problems. For example, if the weather is warm outside, a lot of the heat generated goes to waste because the demand for it drops. On top of that, using such plants makes it really hard to properly plan electricity production, since on cold days it has to be reduced to prioritize heat production. So what's the solution? Use caves with boiling water, which have none of these issues. In Vosteros, there's also one of the largest power plants in all of Sweden which really needs to be put to use. It's made up of four separate units, each pairing a boiler and a turbine. The boiler handles the heat while the turbine takes care of the electricity. Additionally, there's a fifth boiler without its own turbine, but it still contributes to power generation through the turbine of Unit 4. On top of that, the Vosteros plant has a one-of-a-kind fuel processing setup that can prep and store used fuel for one of the plant's units. Over the course of a year, the power plant uses recycled and renewable fuel to generate 700 gigawatt-hours of electricity and 1,800 gigawatt-hours of heat. And it does have the issues we mentioned earlier. Significant losses during periods of lower heating demand and challenges in planning electricity production. Swedes, as you've probably figured out, hate wasting heat that could be put to use. They get it from data centers and even from people. And in colder times, when energy output drops at the main power plant, they have to turn to other electricity generating facilities, which can run on coal. With their current passion for all things green, Swedes aren't too fond of such fuel, so they decided to make use of what's underneath the city, those very caves. No, they weren't dug specifically for this. The caves were already built during the Cold War. While the US and the USSR were competing with each other, Sweden kept its neutrality, but no one in the country on the Scandinavian peninsula was just sitting around. Everyone realized the world was on the brink of World War III, so preparations had to be made. As part of the strategy to ensure energy independence in case of emergencies, they created an oil storage facility with a capacity of 79 million gallons in the early 1970s. However, by the end of the Cold War, the Swedes decommissioned their storage. That was in 1985. Chances are some of the locals still remember the underground passages under the city, while others have no idea about them. But that's not all that important because the company Millar Energy knew about these underground spaces and decided to repurpose them in a totally new way. In 2021, the company kicked off the transformation to serve modern-day Sweden and the city of Vosteros. The project lead for the conversion of the old oil storage facility said right after the work was finished, it was hard. Even though the caves were prepped beforehand and after they were decommissioned, some oil was pumped out, black gold still remained inside. And there were also 53 million gallons of water. By the way, during the process of emptying the caves, one of them turned into something of otherworldly beauty. As the project leader said, this effect happened because water from the centralized heating system was dumped in there to raise the temperature of the remaining oil, making it more manageable. So this and other tasks were successfully completed. About 3,300 feet of pipes were installed, some of them with a diameter of 16 inches. The required wires, heat exchangers, and all other infrastructure for converting the former backup oil storage were also set up. All the work was completed in October 2023. Filling started in December of the same year, and now the underground hot water storage is already up and running. 
By the way, the cost amounted to about 150 million Swedish kronas or 13 million euros. And you know, this investment turned out to be as useful as one could imagine. Why? Thanks to the underground storage of almost boiling water, the cogeneration plant in Vosterus minimizes all the drawbacks we mentioned earlier. To begin with, a power plant can easily operate in warm weather with minimal heat loss. Of course, there are some losses, but more on that later. After the Millar Energy Project was finished, the heat that's generated but not used doesn't just disappear, but goes into heating the water in caves beneath Bosterus. This means it helps balance out the heat loss. When the cold weather sets in, the heat exchangers use the warmth from the underground water to heat the water circulating in the heating system. Thanks to this, the Vosterus power plant can keep generating energy without having to cut back on heat production. The Swedes are pleased. This means fewer situations when they need to sacrifice their commitment to zero emissions and use dirty backup units on fossil fuels. Just 13 million euros fixed two major problems. The Swedes definitely know how to improve efficiency. By the way, a storage of 79 million gallons of heated water will also be very useful if the power plant shuts down completely. It'll provide 13 gigawatt hours of thermal energy for district heating, which will allow heating the homes of 130,000 residents of Vosterus for up to two weeks, depending on the weather outside. The benefits of the storage will only be fully realized after some time once it's filled. Stone walls of the cave originally have the same temperature as the surrounding Earth's crust, therefore after the cave is filled with 203 degree water, the heat will initially transfer to the surrounding rock. Full efficiency can't be expected right away, losses have already been modeled, and over the first four years they'll amount to a disappointing 35 gigawatt hours. However, the soil will warm up over time. A great example is the London Underground. The clay around the tunnels has been heating up for decades due to people and trains, so now it has a temperature between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If we're talking about the subway, heating the surrounding rock is a problem because people start sweating and it's hard to cool down the trains. But if we're talking about an underground water reservoir where high temperatures need to be maintained, then heating the rock is actually a good thing. Besides, it'll happen much faster than in the case of the London subway. A constant water temperature of 203 degrees Fahrenheit will definitely heat things up more effectively than people and passing trains. Actually, according to forecasts, the rock around the heated water will warm up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit in just a couple of years and turn into a protective screen that, if needed, can transfer its thermal energy to the water. In short, the caves beneath Bosterus will become a sort of thermos. This thermos can also be easily used used not only with thermal power plants, but also with other heat generating solutions. For example, with solar collectors we've mentioned today. They don't always work for an obvious reason. The sun doesn't stay in the sky 24-7 since it sets at night, plus there are clouds that reduce the collector's efficiency. If you use hot water storage systems like this one we talked about today, the excess heat can be stored and then used when there's no sun or when it's not enough to meet the demand. In short, it's a really useful solution, especially for a country that aims to make the most efficient use of everything possible. Let's now move to the UK. The period from the late 18th century to the mid-19th century was marked by a rapid shift from an agrarian feudal economy to an industrial capitalist one. How is this connected to underground heated water storage? Coal was the main fuel of that time. Literally everything was powered by the energy from it. And today the UK is like a giant ant nest full of abandoned coal mines. Right now, a quarter of the houses in the UK sit on top of mines that were long flooded and forgotten. What if they were used the same way they did in Vosterus, Sweden? Plus, it's being done in several other countries like Finland. For example, one hot water storage facility was filled in 2021 and has a capacity of around 79 million gallons, and another one is under construction. It's going to be a giga storage holding more than 264 million gallons. The UK has all the right conditions to create plenty of similar storage. That's how coal, which kick-started production with harmful emissions, could now help reduce them. The most interesting thing is that, when it comes to many coal mines in the UK, nature itself seems to encourage their use for heating homes and other buildings. For example, in an old coal seam at High Main in Gateshead, they drilled a well and then measured the temperature of the water there. It turned out that, thanks to geological processes, it had naturally heated up to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And now an electric heat pump has been connected to this water, which makes it possible to maintain the right temperature in several warehouses, at the distribution center, and the local bakery. 
There are even plans to heat a nearby car dealership. Pretty cool, isn't it? The UK Coal Authority, which oversees the country's abandoned mines, seems to think so too. Geologists believe that a quarter of British homes are currently sitting on a coal field stretching across Wales, central Scotland, northern England, and the Midlands. They estimate that the old mine shafts hold 530 billion gallons of warm water. That's equal to more than a quarter of the volume of Scotland's famous Loch Ness. Not too impressed by the numbers? Well, in that case, there's a study showing that Britain's flooded coal mines hold about 2.2 million gigawatt hours of heat with the potential to store even more. Using this underground resource will significantly cut carbon emissions. If heated underground water is used, emissions will be just 25% of what gas produces. On top of that, the water will cost 10% less than its more volatile option for heating. 